Welcome, friends of AI for Autism. Thank you all for joining us for yet another amazing interview where we hear from members of our community and listen to their stories. We have a fascinating guest with us today. Shane is from Arbroath, Scotland, one of the beautiful port towns we walked through on our way up from Brighton to Aberdeen. And Shane recently discovered that he's autistic and has ADHD. And today we'll be hearing Shane's story and we'll get a chance to hear from, learn from his experiences. So please welcome Shane Shepherd. Hey Shane, how's it going? Not too bad. Fantastic, Shane. We'll, we'll dive straight in there. Shane, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how old you were when you were diagnosed as autistic? I was 23, so only like last year, because I'm 24 now. Wow. Um, um, sorry, on you go. Yeah, yeah. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself, your interests, and things like that. Do you know what? This is the hardest thing someone asks you about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just like anyone else, really. Yeah. I just I enjoy wrestling, skateboarding, taking the dog out for a walk, playing the computer. Yeah. Your normal day to day life. Fantastic. And I remember when we spoke last week, you mentioned about. Uh, <laughs> playing the guitar too yeah we've been playing guitar for like oh, close to 10 years or something fantastic electric acoustic both 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 yeah was that the once voice you, once you can play one you can play the other one. Oh yes yeah was that cali by the way your dog yeah yeah what, what breed is cali uh she's a border collie border collie beautiful beautiful lovely lord beautiful dogs uh, oh, Shane, uh, so so you last year you discovered you were autistic. Could you tell us a little bit about the process of how you found out? In a way, I don't like telling the story because I realise that a lot of people struggle to get diagnosed and I didn't have a problem. I really didn't. But I did in a way because I lost my mum at 17 mm. through cancer and I had to go and live with a cousin and I got diagnosed with depression and well, my whole life just kind of flipped and I was young, I'd, I couldn't, I didn't understand what was going on. And obviously now I realise I'm autistic and I went through that, mm -hmm. which is I'm kind of proud of myself in a way as well. But I went through a really, really dark period of time, being on medications, being off medications, on medications. And just, I don't know, I just always felt something isn't right. Like these medications ain't for me. It's just something, it's like something in the back of your head saying like, yeah, I might be depressed, but something else is wrong here. No one's paying attention. Mm -hmm. And like all the way through like school and stuff like that, I used to get really anxious about going to school. I never really went to school. Yeah. I don't know. Like it came to a point last year where I was like, right, I need help. And I just, I speak like my girlfriend, she was big into mental health in that. And then I started talking to her and, just realized right i need to go and do something so i done research myself i found out what adhd was i was like okay that kind of looks like me went to the doctors told them i think i've got adhd to be honest with you when it comes to doctors they're a pain in the ass i don't mean to swear or nothing but it's like it's, if, it, if it isn't if you can't see it nothing's the matter and like they don't understand so i just i'd done research myself i was like i'm not waiting for them to tell me because it's taking too long so I done research myself, went in, and I was like, look, I think I've got this. I want to take a test. I want, I was basically forcing them to put me to the mental health team, which they then did put me for the mental health team. And I spoke to the guy on the phone because of coronavirus and stuff like that. And I told him about my childhood and how I'm always hyper and I always like I can forget things really easy and all this stuff. And straight away he went, I normally have to send you out a test, which they normally do, and you've got to like fill in little things before the session. But he was like, I could tell straight away that you've got ADHD, you're willing to go on medication. And I was like, yep. And then boom, straight from that day one, I was on medication. And, but that's what I mean. Like I thought everyone went through that. Well, now I realize that I've been on a couple of sites and stuff where people are autistic and ADHD and that, and it's a struggle. For a lot, I was very, very lucky. And I don't really like saying how lucky I am, but I am very, very lucky. But I also think it's because I've done research myself. It was nothing to do with the doctors. They didn't help at all. It was me and people around me who was helping me. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely I, right. 
many of the people we've spoken to as well and people who we've read about online they've had to really push and push or they're on a waiting list for such a long time whether it's to di get themselves diagnosed or for a diagnosis for their children but i think you really did the right thing to push push you did your research you pushed it i mean well done for doing all of that and for be well being diagnosed it wasn't it was not just me you know it's people around me i had help i did i had and i think you do like if you have ADHD autism, then yeah, you do need help, and it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Especially, you don't need help all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, could you go into a bit of detail about ADHD, what exactly it is, and how you express it, or how you used to express it? It's going to be funny because, like, yeah, I've got ADHD, but I still can't tell you everything about it because it's new. Like, yeah, I've had it all my life, but I've only recently realized what yeah. it is. Yeah. So, like, some of the stuff that I used to do as a child, like temper tantrums, mm -hmm. and, and I'm also autistic, which after I found out I was ADHD, I looked into autism and realized, oh, I think I've got this exact same thing. Done research, went to them, think I'm autistic, turned out I've got mild, mildly autistic. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's just like seeing things like people used to say I was a spoiled child. I wasn't a spoiled child. It's just, I kind of had a rough childhood, so my mum always, like, gave me computers or whatever. And then people always saw me, like, taking temper tantrums if I didn't get what I wanted. And people saw this as a bad child. And then when I look back on it, I'm like, well, no, I'm as undiagnosed with ADHD and autism and I was freaking out and I didn't realize why. It's probably loud noises or lights or something. I didn't realize this. My mum didn't know this. She was great. My mum was fantastic. But then it kind of hurt hearing like my brother's going, oh, it's just because you're spoiled, shut up type thing. And it's like, it's, that's the kind of environment I, I was in type thing. Like, I had a loving family, I just didn't understand mental health. Mm. And then when I started to realize things about mental health, like I'm still learning things now. There's still things to this day I realize, oh, I do that because I have this. And it kind of, I don't know, in a way it feels good I can do that. I like being able to go, oh, that's why I do it. Some people don't. Some people just don't want dinos, don't want, that's fair enough. But me, I like being able, well, I've constantly always done weird stuff with my hands. Like, I've constantly, one of my things was I used to, like, rub my hands together. If I was playing the computer or something and it was on a loading screen, I'd have to move. I'm constantly fidgeting. So I'd constantly rub my hands and, like, my best friend would be like, why are you doing that? I don't know. You know, he's like, I do it once in a while. You do it every 10 seconds. I realise now it's stimming. And I'm like, ah, so that's what that is. So, like, soon as I realised, little things click. Yeah. And I'll still do it to this day. Like, I'll forget something or I'll do something new. And I'll, I wonder if that's because of ADHD or autism. And I'll go and search it and now I'm like ah oh, it is right cool so kind of I don't know it's just like I'm still learning myself I think I don't know it's like medically the government and like medical profession I think they've turned a blind eye for years to mental health like I, I only thing I wish I got taught I was autistic and ADHD as a child because education for me was a struggle mm -hmm. I couldn't concentrate at all and it was not for the lack of not wanting to. It's the lack of, I had no dopamine in my brain. I wasn't finding this enjoyable. I have to sit here. You're forcing me to sit here. I'm falling asleep. I should never have been in that environment. I should have been taken out of that environment, got help that I needed, and maybe learned the way I needed to learn. But instead, I just sat there, like falling asleep and missing half my education. And because of that, I didn't even do any exams or nothing. I've got no grades. So I, I don't know. I think... We need to learn more and be accepting to learn. Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating, everything you shared and you touched on your family too. We're going to come to that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you after discovering that you have, you're autistic and have ADHD and what that means to you, how did you feel and how did you see yourself maybe change as a person after that discovery? When I found out I had ADHD, I was over the moon because I felt like, yes, this is finally being lifted. I can get on the medication that I need to be on. I can finally come off of maybe the antidepressants, which I am. I don't, don't take any antidepressant at all. Yeah. I can finally get back to the way I was before mum died type thing. And then things started to still get a little bit weird. Like I still felt something isn't right here. And like summertime, I'd go outside in the summer. I didn't realise that when I go out, it's weird. It's like someone turns the contrast up. On, see, when you're like watching a TV or something, you turn the contrast up and it's like too bright. Mm. That's what it feels like for me when I go out in the summer and I don't have sunglasses on. Mm. 
<laughs> it just feels, it irritates my eyes. I start to get a sore head. And then once I start getting a sore head, I'm just irritated. Once I'm irritated, leave me alone. Because I'll just snap, be angry, or I'll just, I don't know, I'll just like forget things easy and that. So I used to hate the summer and stuff. But like this summer, I wore sunglasses. I have pillows, I'm absolutely loving it. And it's like I'm doing little things that I realized, okay, that's because of this. Well, how do I counter that? Because I still want to go out and have fun in the summer. But what do I do? Well, you put sunglasses on, you protect yourself. If I'm out in a busy environment and I'm with people, I'll just put headphones on or something if I'm too noisy. So I'm finding little solutions to help the problem. And it really is helping. Like, it really is. And I've been feeling mentally the best I've felt in years. And it's weird because I'm also grieving because I've lost my brother like a few months ago. You lost your brother. Oh. Yeah, like a few months ago. So it's kind of, it's weird that I'm mentally I'm feeling good, but I'm also grieving. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear about both of the passings in your family, both your mother when you were age 17 and more recently your brother too. In fact, yeah. on, the, on the subject of family, I'd like to ask you, you mentioned earlier about how your mum was and also how your brother was. Uh, I don't know whether it was the same brother. Could you tell us how friends and family were towards you after discovering, well, oh, how they are now after discovering that you have ADHD, that you're autistic, and what support has been like from them back then and now? I don't know. It's been a weird one. It really has, like, I don't know. In a good way, like, not weird in a bad way. I think because I've been through so much, like, a lot of my family do stick by me and make sure I'm okay no matter what. So like me coming to them and going, yeah, I'm autistic, it kind of just explains to them why the way I was as a child, but they don't have to worry about me now. They never have yeah. to worry about me now because they see what I am and I can do things on my own and that. But it just makes them go, ah, right, that's why he was a little shit type thing. He wasn't really his fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, shame. But, yeah. So I don't mean to swear, by the way. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. I mean, feel free to express yourself however you like. I mean, we're having an open conversation over here. And if anyone at home is upset by it, too bad. Uh, so Shane, uh, could you share, you've shared some of the challenging things you faced growing up um, in the last few years. Would you like to tell us a little bit more, both in relation to your ADHD and autism too? See, I can only talk, like, I don't know, like, just recently, like, growing up, obviously, I didn't realise I had ADHD or autism. <clears throat> so I couldn't really tell you, like, the things that I'd done before, if it was caused by that or if it wasn't. Because I've always been into, like, more the extreme stuff. So I was always into extreme sports. Extreme something. If it was extreme in it, I loved it. I don't know what it was. It was like an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. I was, like, I was very addicted as a child of skateboarding. I loved going down ramps and kickflip because it just made me feel amazing once I landed a trick I've been doing for, trying to do for months. And so I, I think I was very lucky in the sense that growing up, I'd done a lot of activities and I think that helped. But if I didn't do skateboarding, if I wasn't into wrestling, I would have been a troubled child. I probably would have got into drugs. I probably would have done if I was hanging about. But I, luckily enough, I didn't hang about with people like that. But I've also been in that circle and seen what drug addiction can do. So I was also scared of taking drugs. So I don't know, it's a weird one. I think sports and exercise helped me more than anything as a child without realizing it and realizing it now. It was definitely sports. And if I was, because I wasn't medicated, I didn't, I wasn't on any meds because I didn't know I had it, an issue. So when I was out skateboarding and stuff like that and hyper focusing on it and then coming home at nighttime, I can relax because I've been out all day. And my body's just exhausted. And you speak to anyone with ADHD, the best thing feeling in the world is your body being exhausted and your eyes shutting because you can't sleep. Yeah. I've got insomnia, like I've got insomnia, like God knows what. So like my eyes are always open. That so like having that feeling of coming home and being drained. It's, it sounds weird, but it's so relaxing just to sit there and not move. <laughs> you don't have to stim. Your body's just cool. Mm. It's, it's like I don't know. It's weird, but yeah, I think exercise and like not re realizing it now exercise helped more than anything else but it's like skateboarding football any kind of sport that's amazing absolutely amazing and i guess this also ties in what you said about taking part in extreme activities and being an adrenaline yeah. junkie i guess that also right. transposes to your interests as well you mentioned you love wrestling i saw the ww yeah. tattoo on your arm and do you have any favorite wrestlers or there we go <laughs> 
Fantastic. Uh, yeah. My favourite wrestler was also my first heartbreak in death. I realised oh. that people would die. Yeah. Because uh, I... Uh, Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Uh, when I found out, it broke, when like my brother came in, he was like, son, I'm sorry, and handed me the paper. And I was like, what well, does it mean he's dead? Because I was young at the time. Yeah. And he's like, you'll never see him again. And I was like, oh. So I was like, kind of is weird when I think about it because wrestling's been in and out of my life. If, if I get depressed, I don't watch wrestling. I don't want to watch wrestling. But when I'm extremely happy like I am now, I constantly want to watch wrestling. Nothing makes me more happier than watching two grown men play fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Shane, uh, now, after discovering that you're autistic and that you have ADHD, uh, I know you've been speaking to people about it. Have you done anything to actively raise awareness? <laughs> Just tell people. Tell people, yeah. But then people get... You live in a day and age where you can't say something to someone without someone getting hurt or offended. And it's like, shut up. Like, do you know what I mean? Something something always offends someone. So <laughs> yep. if I see someone that acts the same as me and constantly getting in trouble, I can't turn around and say to them, oh, you might have ADHD or autism. Yeah. Because they find it offensive. Why do you find that? I don't understand it. Yeah. Just, and maybe it's my autism because they say we're rude or whatever. I'm not trying to be. But... I want to, I don't know, like, since I've found out I've had it, my life changed completely. Like, it really has. Like, if you saw me, like, a few years ago, like, there was a point after my mum died I was down in England and I was happy, but then I ended up in a relationship that didn't work out. And then I became extremely depressed. Mm -hmm. Like, if you meant me back then, yes, I told I wouldn't be, be sitting here talking to you. I just, wow. so much anxiety, so much... Going through my head, I would just sit there and do nothing, listen to music. That's the constant, just sit every day listening to music. But then, I don't know, it's like, I went on this journey and it's just, now I realise like, after my brother died as well, because he only died at 39 years old. Wow. It kind of, I don't know, like, I found it hard to accept I had autism. I did. Mm -hmm. ADHD, I didn't mind autism. I found it hard because I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. I thought an autistic person was someone that was smart. I ain't smart. I'm smart in some ways, but also extremely stupid in other ways. Like, I can't tie my shoelaces. Wow. I've never been able... I've tried constantly. I just can't do it. I find it funny now. It's something I laugh about with people. I can't tie my shoelaces. I get someone else to tie it for me. That's incredible. But I can do it. But I could do a kickflip on a skateboard. Can you do that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know many people who could do grinds and ollies or anything else, but that's really that's fascinating. Yeah. Exactly. But I can't yeah. tie my shoelaces. <laughs> Uh, that's that's amazing yeah uh, I mean thank you very much for sharing that I find that truly truly remarkable so I feel like a I feel like a ramble on quite a bit no that's absolutely fine I mean it's fascinating and I'm sure people at home who'll be watching this when it finally comes out will find it just as fascinating as I do uh, Shane do you have any sensory sensitivity issues whether it's Whoa, now or yeah. growing up yeah 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 um Noise, loud noise. I just realised that I'm very sensitive to loud noise. Loud. But if you stick headphones on me with extremely loud music, I love it. Yeah. So it is a bit weird, like, but it's more tra not traffic, but people shouting. Yeah. I don't like aggression. I don't like anger. I don't like any of this. So when I hear someone shouting, yeah. it puts me in defensive mode. I get ready to attack. Yeah. And I don't like that. I hate being in that situation. So I hate banging noise. And I don't know, like, see if someone slams a door. It's like, I don't know, like someone's just putting the nails all the way through my body and it's just, oh, it doesn't hurt, but it's such an uncomfortable feeling and it just makes me shout, stop slamming doors. You just, you, you have to because it makes you explode. So noise is a big one for me and I realised that I'm quite sensitive with my smell and my sight. I've always wore, I broke them, but I've got meant to wear glasses. So like my sight's always been a problem. But like I say, out in the sunlight, it's like someone turns up the contrast and I can't, I can't focus. It's like I can see everything fine and all that, but I just, if someone's talking to me, I'm not really paying attention to you because there's so much going on in my head. Like, I can't focus. Unless, once, like the other day, I put on my sunglasses, wore it the whole day, forgot I was even wearing sunglasses, had a great day. Yeah. I was able to concentrate. I realized, I took off the sunglasses for like two seconds and realized how bright it was. Wow. And I was like, wow, like that, like, like someone just turned up the contrast. I was like, whoa, like that's extremely bright. And I put something back on the sunglasses, had a great day, no headache. So it's just little things. 
and then smell i am in love with some smells and some smells give me a headache straight away that's amazing what smells do you love i love fresh smell i love i'm a massive i love like aftershave smells so like, i've even got a collection of like aftershaves i just i love like smell like wood smells and yeah if I'm wearing aftershave, you will see me sniff my arm about five times just because yeah. it smells nice. Yeah. I just, I love smell. But then certain smells just gives me a headache. Like the moment I smell them, oh, no, I'll take that away. Mm. But also I've realized if I'm in a bad mood, a smell can make me happy. Mm-hmm. So if I smell something, that, say like an aftershave that I loved as a child, if I smell that and I'm in a bad mood, it takes me back to when I was a child. It's for smelling that, and I don't know, it just makes me feel happy again. Amazing. Yeah, he's this bit. I don't know. I'm still learning myself. This is truly fascinating. Just making notes of some of the things that you've mentioned. I think it's amazing. Uh, well, uh, us as a team at AI for Autism, we're currently raising awareness to help build a tool, something like a Fitbit for autistic people with sensory sensitivity issues to help oh, identify nice. what's triggering, uh, what's causing a meltdown. Would you say a tool like this would have helped you or maybe helped other autistic people grow- while they were growing up? Depends. Like, how is a smartwatch going to help me with sensitivity with my eyes? Yeah, very, very, very true. I guess that certain, in certain ways, we still want to find out how it can work and see how it can work, especially when it comes to visual things in this respect. Mm-hmm. You know, but let's say, for example, if the watch had a certain light sensor and it says, okay, over a certain level, it would possibly result in a meltdown. And after a certain amount of time, when we have a certain amount of data, then it might give an indicator that something's about to happen. So to make changes in your day-to-day activities to accommodate that. Yeah, that's just one example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also like, I don't know. I'd be willing to give it a try. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd put a smartwatch on, see what it could do and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, it's more for me, it's remembering. Mm-hmm. If I had a tool that can make me remember. Wow. Then my day would be a lot easier. Because if I'm leaving the house, if my smartwatch can then tell me, well, hold on a minute, you've not got your sunglasses. Yeah. I, I would, you know what I mean? Even if you put a timer on, knowing yes. that I'm going to leave the house, I would forget I've put that timer on. Yeah. So when I go to leave, the timer yeah. would go off. I'd look, oh, all right, okay, I need to get my sunglasses because I already know I was going to leave anyway. Yeah. But I forgot. Yeah. So something like that could help. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh, by the way, since you mentioned sunglasses, do you find yourself often forgetting them at home and having to go back to pick them up? Yeah, I've done it a few times. No, oh, I see. I'll go outside and if it's too bright, I'm like, whoa, I can't stand this. Yeah. Because it really they, they push me in a shitty mood. Once I get a headache, mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm an, I, I don't, I don't even like to be around myself, to be honest with you, when wow. I'm like that. Wow. That's amazing. And is there a message? We're approaching the end of the interview. Uh, two more questions. Is there a message you would like to send out to your audience about autism? ADHD and what it's like to be autistic and have ADHD. I don't I think I just want people to stop being ignorant. Stop being ignorant. Like if I yeah, if I tell you I've got ADHD or autism or something, it's not because it's your fault. I'm not saying nothing like that. But then you have to, if you don't have that, and I am being rude, don't be like, oh, it's because he's autism. Tell me I'm being rude. How am I meant to stop if you don't tell me? Mm. So I hate it if I tell someone I've got autism that they like give me this little pass card that's all right, it's because he's autistic. Well, no, it's not all right. If I'm being a you know a tool, tell me, don't let me do things. I, the thing that I hate is I just think people need to learn a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's not like we can't force people to learn. You have to, society has to learn itself. Mm-hmm. So even if we go out and hand out a thousand leaflets, or oh, this is all the sensitivity things, or this is why your kid's having a mental breakdown, if you don't read it, you ain't gonna learn. So I think it's kind of, it's a hard one to approach people to be like, hey, I've got this or I've got this and this is why I act like that and don't judge me any different. Because I don't know, it's like before I knew I had autism or ADHD, I was fine. So now I know I've got autism and ADHD, nothing's changed, I'm fine. Yeah. And it's just accepting, I just do random weird things that normal, I don't want to say normal, but neurotypical people 
you know, they don't understand like all the little stems and tapping. Well, actually, speak to people. Let them understand. Oh yeah, I twiddle my fingers. Who cares? You know what I mean? I think we have to try and spread the word because I think there's a lot of people here who's going undiagnosed and are turning a blind eye to it mm. because they don't want a stigma of being in a mental health category. Yeah. Because it ain't be funny, but if I can go 23 years and not know, then there's someone out there is going 60 years and has no clue. Exactly. Because what happens to the ADHD kid when he grows up? He's still got it. And I think there should be a lot more help and support and work. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like the jobs I've had, I'm lucky. I've had a lot of help in my job, but it was my fault because I didn't know I had autism and stuff like that. And I was taking days off where I just couldn't deal with people. I get days mm-hmm. where I need to be by myself or just be with my girlfriend and the dog. I don't want to see no one. And it's not their fault. It's I need to recharge. I need to get my energy back to start going out there again. Because it, it's crippling with anxiety. Like anxiety I ain't felt before sometimes. Yeah. Especially with loud noises and stuff. So I think with work, don't give us a leeway. Don't let us off 24-7. But if I'm freaking out because it's too noisy, go and, you know, go like Shane, go and take five minutes at the back. Yeah. You know, go and have a drink or something. Just go and chill. Yeah. Have five minutes. Go and do something. Or... If you are autistic and you want to wear headphones at work, but still listen to people, not listen to music or nothing, just put them on and let them do it because it will take away the sensitivity and they'll do a better job. That's amazing. Uh, it's on the subject of work, we're approaching the end of the interview, but I did want to ask you, if there is there something you enjoy doing when it comes to work, what would you describe knowing yourself, your interests, and how you are, I, what would be your ultimate I, job or work? I ain't going to lie to you. The jobs that I've had are... Like the, the people in the job have been great. It's not them. The jobs I've had themselves are shit. Like, I, I used to work in... I don't mean that in a bad way because they're great jobs. They're just not for me. I found them boring or whatever. And then sometimes... I've always worked in retail. So a lot of customers, again... And when I see the good customers and they'd leave smiling, I'd feel a million bucks. I'd feel amazing. But then you'd get the one who comes in or you've got the order wrong and he's being an absolute tool to you. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy hates me. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy, like, he's wanting to kill me, basically. This guy doesn't wow. care. He wants his boss is rolling out the door. He's just annoyed. Wow. You know, I'm just a person. But that's, my mind goes into, like, that state. Yeah. So I've actually been thinking about work quite a lot, to be honest with you. And it's like, I can't be in retail because I can't do that. I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, what can I do? And it's just like, I don't know, I'm at this stage now where I'm like, I need to do something, but I need to find work that suits me. It's weird. Because all the jobs that I've been in, into have either been sacked because I'm not going in, because I can't go in, I physically can't. I just, I've told you I've got diarrhea or something, I don't. I've got so much anxiety, I don't know how to explain it. But then, like, on the other hand, it's like there's got to be a job out there that I can do. And I think it has to be a job I enjoy. Because if I don't enjoy it, I can't do it. I really can't. It's too much of me. When something's too much of me, I end up giving up. And then people are like, oh, you just give up or do that. And they don't realize how much that actually hurts me. Like, I hate being out of job. I hate seeing them unemployed. I can't stand it. Like, at the moment, I really can't. Like, seeing people and get... I, to me, it's like people think I'm a benefits girl. I'm not. I hate being on benefits. This is the longest I've been on benefits my whole entire life. I can't stand it. And it's just like, now I need to find a job where... I need to, I don't, I think a lot, I don't know if it's just me or it could be an ADHD and autism thing, but I'm a very creative person. Yeah. So I think I need to find a job where I'm creative, where I can stick to it. And I've done, I've not realized that retail isn't only work. There is jobs out there that cater to doing stuff. And when I say creative, I don't mean drawing. I can't draw, but I'm creative with ideas. I'm creative with storytelling. I'm creative with this. I'm creative with that. And there's plenty of jobs out there with that. And I'm also seeing that if there isn't a job out there like that, well, make your own job. Yeah. Do, do your own business because no one's employing nowadays anyway. So go and find something and make your own business. So I think, I don't know, jobs are weird. You do a job that you love. If you don't love it, you're probably not going to do it. You're probably, especially if you're autistic and ADHD, you'll probably end up getting the sack because you can't do it. You physically can't. Your body's drained or whatever. And if you can't do it, brilliant. That's amazing. Like, there's people out there who's autistic and working in retail and that, and that's fantastic. Hats off to them. I can do it. 
I've tried it and I couldn't. So I think, I don't know, it just depends on the person. And I think just employees need to learn a little bit more about autism. So if a guy, someone does come over to you and say, look, I've got ADHD, this is why I ping off the walls half the time. I don't mean to be rude to customers. Do you know what I mean? It might give them a little leeway of, wait, I can't get in trouble because he wasn't actually rude, but he didn't realise or something like that. They said, just go, oh, don't say that to people, it's a bit rude. So I think, yeah, I don't know. It's just understanding. Understanding. I think, yeah, I feel like I ramble on quite a lot. If, again, no, no, it's probably it, ADHD medication. It just makes you, me you know, rumble. That- I can say for certain it's certainly not rambling at all. In fact, you've provided some very, very, very vivid descriptions of your experiences and your thoughts. So I really do appreciate that a lot, Shane. I mean, I have one final question before our interview comes to an end. And thank you so much again. Is there any way that our audience can find out about you? Are you on social media? If you're happy with them reaching out, if they wanted to? Um, I thought I've been trying. I don't know. Like I'm a very private person, not that's private, fine. yeah. But just no, that's, that's if someone wants to talk to me, it's like that's cool. But I don't understand why someone would want to talk to me. <laughs> that goes through my head. Like, yeah, I'll talk to anyone. Like, come yeah. talk to me. But I, I personally don't understand why you'd want to come talk to me. No, that's that is just me. Fine. Doing me. Yeah, well, well, that's absolutely fine. And uh, once again, Shane, thank you so much for an absolutely fantastic interview. And for anyone who's yes. been watching this at home, thank you all for your time and for listening. If you resonated with what you heard Shane say today and you want to share your story, please get in touch with us. Let's put your voice out there in the world. Thank you all Don't be afraid. so much. And bye for now.